Hello and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to deal with hunger and how to use food to survive. So, you'll notice that um, there are ten little legs of meat symbols in the top right corner of the heads-up display. And this indicates how hungry you are. When all ten of these symbols are there, um, then you're not hungry at all. But once that meter starts shaking, it means that you're going to get hungry and that the, those symbols are going to start running out. Now, you only need to worry about this in easy, normal, or hard mode. So you'll see the difficulty is normal. If I were set to peaceful, my hunger would not deplete. And depending on the difficulty, if you completely run out of food, you'll take varying levels of damage. So, in my inventory, I have every possible food you can obtain, and I've custom named them to show how effective they are. So, the white meter here is how many points of hunger are restored. So, for example, if I eat a pumpkin pie, I get four of those symbols back. Um, the purple meter is a little more complicated. This represents your saturation. And saturation is basically how well the food will stick with you. So, um, you'll want to eat foods with high saturation so that your hunger bar stays near full for as long as possible because once it starts running out then you'll stop regenerating health. So let's take a look at some of these foods. A lot of the foods are not very good. For example, if you eat a puffer fish, it hardly gives you any hunger back. It actually gives you a status effect that makes you more hungry while giving you nausea and poison, which means you lose health and your screen starts to wobble. So you don't want to eat these. The um, foods in this list are sort of arranged by how effective they are. So things like raw potatoes, clownfish, if you find anything like this, it's generally not that great to eat them, especially since you can often turn them into better foods. So instead of eating pufferfish, you can convert them into potions of water breathing. Instead of eating raw potatoes, you can cook them into baked potatoes, which are much better. Um, and you don't want to eat things like raw chicken because you might get that stas effect that makes you more hungry. So after, um, there are a few things that could be useful. For example, cookies do not give you much saturation. You can see the purple bar is very short, but you can craft them eight at a time, which means you can get a lot of cookies, and if you have the time to eat them all, you can use them to just get rid of any mild hunger you might have. Um, melon slices are another good way of doing this. If you kill animals, like pigs or cows or sheep, you can get meat. This is raw mutton, raw rabbit, raw pork, and raw beef. And you can see they aren't very effective, but when you cook these, they become some of the most effective foods you can have. Um, carrots are also very good. They don't restore much hunger-wise, but they have a very good saturation. Rotten flesh is probably the most common food because it's almost always dropped when you defeat zombies. And unfortunately, if you eat rotten flesh, you have an 80% chance of getting the hunger status effect. But fortunately, if you get two status effects and they're both hunger, they don't stack up. They just act like a single status effect. So if you're like almost starving, and you have a lot of raw flesh on hands that can actually be beneficial to eat. But if you have other foods, you should definitely go for those. 
Um, apples are good. Bread is good. You can buy, just find apples from trees and you can obtain bread by farming with seeds. Cooked fish is good because it restores a lot of saturation. And now we're getting to the really effective foods. So you'll want to use these whenever possible. So if you um, place raw meat in a furnace and you cook it, you can get things like cooked rabbit, which you can see is very good, cooked chicken, cooked mutton, and the two best ones are cooked steak and cooked pork chops. These restore a ton of saturation and that each one gives back four symbols on your hunger meter. There are a few more. You can cook potatoes to make baked potatoes. If you combine a bowl with a brown mushroom and a red mushroom, you can get mushroom stew. Um, you can cook salmon. You can make pumpkin pie from uh, pumpkins, eggs, and sugar. You can make rabbit stew. Rabbit stew is one of the best things you can get, if not the best. You can see it restores half your hunger meter and gives a ton of saturation. Um, it's made from a variety of ingredients, but if you're able to make it, it's worth it. And the last thing is a cake. The cake is strange because you can actually place it on the ground and take slices off of it. A single cake holds up to six slices, and each slice is worth just a little bit, but in total it'll restore six units on your hunger bar. So there are a few more things which I set aside that I wanted to talk about individually. First is the golden apple. The golden apple is really useful. It gives you a bunch of saturation. It doesn't restore much of your hunger meter, but actually gives you bonus health. So you regenerate health for a little while after eating it, and you gain a couple extra points on your health bar. This is one of the few foods that you can eat even when you're not hungry which means I can demonstrate how this works. So you'll see my health bar is kind of hopping up and down, and that means that I'm regenerating health. And I got these two golden hearts, which are basically temporary hit points. Next is the, so the, you get, um, the golden apple has to be crafted. You basically have to take an apple and craft it with eight golden ingots all around it. So it's a little expensive, but it's very good. You can see the absorption effect lasts for a long time. Next is the enchanted golden apple. So if you eat this, you get a lot of bonuses. You get a huge regeneration buff for 30 seconds, um, a lot more absorption, so you get those two extra golden hearts, then you get resistance, which reduces the damage you take, and fire resistance, which makes you immune to fire and lava. Unfortunately, this is very hard to craft. It requires that you take an apple and craft it with eight gold blocks instead of eight gold ingots. This is sometimes referred to as the notch apple, and there is an achievement for getting it. Um, if I go to the achievements menu, It's, you can sort of find it somewhere around here. Um, and it's in the branch uh, where you craft really interesting items. So here it is. So as long as you've gotten this achievement, if you craft a notch apple, you can get one of these special achievements. So. The last thing I want to talk about is the golden carrot. It's very similar, but it doesn't give as many effects. Um, golden carrots are usually used to craft potions of night vision, but as you can see, it gives the highest saturation out of any food in the game. So if you have a lot of gold, then you can actually keep some of these with you and it'll keep your player full and satiated for a really long time. So always sort of think about which foods you want to take with you. It's generally good to have meat, which is just really good for both stats. 
and fruit, which is really easy to farm and you can get a lot of it. And of course, these golden items are for much later in the game, but you can still find them really useful. So just remember to use your furnace to cook your food, um, start farms whenever you need to, only use things like raw flesh in case of extreme situations or emergencies, and that's it. So that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching.